So I was watching one of your videos uh, while researching you and I mentioned, uh, and you mentioned something that kind of stuck with me and it, it was, you can never master hitting. So can you expand more kind of on that message? Yeah, I just think, you know, regardless of who it is, Mike Trout, uh, Barry Bonds, I think that, that you know, hitting, you, you can never be perfect. You, you know, you're never going to be perfect every time. And it's the same thing in life. I mean, it hit, it's the same thing. Like, we're not going to ever be, you know, I'm maxed out on my, on my IQ or, uh, you know, my knowledge. I'm just going to stop, stop learning, you know, for me uh, and for hitters, you know, the game itself. That's part of the fun of uh, the game of baseball and softball is like we're constantly learning, constantly trying to find ways to get better, how to beat our uh, opponents. And so uh, hitting, you can never master hitting to a tee and have the perfect swing that's going to, you know, match every pitcher. And, and at the same time, you know, pitchers are trying to get better and we're always having to make changes. And so it's, a, just, it's, a, it's an evolving game and that's part of the frustration and, and a lot of part of the fun. So you look around baseball today and you see three things happening at the plate, walks, strikeouts, and home runs. Uh, launch angle has become an obsession with a lot of these baseball players today. Uh, and a lot of that has to do with approach. I know me personally, a lot of, um, I see a lot of three, one, uh, and two, one fastball swings. They're being used pretty much all the time. Now there's uh, a lack of kind of two strike approach now that maybe we would have seen 20 years ago. Um, so give me your thoughts on that. And, and if, cause I know a lot of that is, is mental and, you know, on a three-two pitch, trying to hit the home run. So, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, I just really think I really think it depends on your level. I mean, I, I you know, in the high school level, uh, baseball, for example, it depends. You know, if you've got fields that are three, three twenty down the line and three fifty to four hundred in center field, like that's just that that's not going to play very often. That type of unless you are an athlete that can do that. And so, you know, what I tell even our college players is this: you know, if your left field fence is three twenty. And you can routine, routinely hit the ball in the air 330 to 340. Um, let's, like, let's do that. But if you routinely hit the ball 315, you just led the, you just led the country in flyouts. And so you've got to really know your swing. You've got to know your tools. If you're a 5'7", 140-pound second baseman, like trying to live the launch angle life and get the ball in the air uh, probably isn't great. But at the same time, like the launch angle of a line drive through the hole you know, over shortstop's head is like 10 degrees. So we can still train at the 10 degree launch angle. And we can talk about that. If that's something that the hitter wants to talk about, I have no problem uh, with that. I, I, I like the term launch angle. I like data. And I think you can use it to teach. I just think that every player is different in the sense of uh, what their tools are. In the major league level, every single one of those guys can hit a home run. I, and so I've worked with Daniel Descalso uh, for a few years. He's like 5'9", 175 and can hit home runs, no problem. And there's guys that – so everybody at that level – same thing with college softball. At college softball, the fences are 200 feet, 220 in center field, and every one of the players on our team can hit a home run every single day, all day long. Uh, and, and so for us, we can train much differently than a high school – if I'm a high school baseball coach, I'm, you know, we can use launch angle as a, as a tool. We can talk about it. We can measure it, and we can, we can talk about – launch angle but I'll tell you that launch angle training that we talk about at the high school level uh with with high school team is so much different than a college softball team or a major league baseball team so I just think it's relative to the individual and the team and you just got to be really smart when doing that it's not a one-size-fits-all uh term mm -hmm. and especially when you get to the higher levels you see more uh pitchers that have better control yep. and they're they're they have a better knowledge of the strike zone they're breaking stuff's better yep and I so think you know every coach has to find what's, you know, for us, my hitting philosophy is do damage. And my hitting philosophy is OPS, on-base percentage, plugging percentage. So for us, like, we're trying to get more walks. We're trying to hit more home runs. And so, you know, for for our team, and it's every, everybody at every level is different. At our team, you know, we were in top five in the country in walks this year. And we, we led the country in triples uh, by a long shot. And uh, we, we had – and so for us, that's – and doing damage – walks and home runs and triples extra base hits they do produce produce the most runs so i'm okay with that i think the game of baseball i said i know it's probably boring for a lot of people walk strikeouts and home runs but there is some give and take hey i'm willing to give up a little bit of strikeouts for a little bit more power you just can't give up a lot and i think if you want if you're a baseball follower if you follow joey gallo at all you've seen 
the progression of him as a hitter. He was an all or nothing guy that tons of strikeouts and home runs. And now he's found a way to kind of lower his attack angle. He's not, he's not swinging up as much. And so he's, he's in that good sweet spot of like, Hey, not striking out as much uh, and getting some rewards from that. So I think, again, everybody's kind of different in, in that sense.